What led you to look into the role of P. acnes in sterility test failures? I had always been aware of the slow growing characteristics of P. acnes and the challenges they pose to our detection methods, but a positive process simulation conducted early in my career is what really spurred my interest. Not driven so much by intellectual curiosity, but by practicality. How do we design a process simulation that instills confidence in our ability to recover the organism? It was obviously present somewhere in our process. While we had recovered it in a process simulation, the results during growth promotion testing using the recovered organism in later process simulations were mixed. That was frustrating. Over the past 20 years, recovery of P. agnes from sterility tests has been consistent. No matter the company, no matter the product, whether medical device or sterile injectable. Recognizing the relationship between positive process simulations and positive sterility tests, I had to understand what controls were needed, both in production and during the sterility test, to avoid future sterility test positives. Are there slow-growing organisms other than P. acnes that should be considered when challenging their aseptic process simulation? Well, 14 days of incubation is sufficient time to allow visual detection of viable organisms that have been recovered. Often the lag of spores needing to germinate and grow out is the critical issue, not the growth rate. There is plenty of evidence that organisms recovered from pharmaceutical processing areas are stressed and may have challenged viability and growth. Potentially, most recovered organisms could be slow growers under those conditions. As P. acnes most likely enters as a drop-in or touch contamination from personnel, it may be less stressed than an environmental organism that has been on a surface or has come in contact with a disinfectant. I learned early on not to have too much confidence in negative interim reads, both for process simulations and sterility tests, because recovered organisms may grow slower than the ATCC organism. Do you think the association between P. acnes and sterility test failures makes the case for requiring the sterility test? In my experience, the root cause of the majority of sterility positives and process simulation failures is poor aseptic behavior and technique. The way to minimize the potential for contamination is to have controls, such as isolators limiting personnel activity in critical zones. As long as personnel are performing activities for non-terminally sterilized products in critical zones, a sterility test should be required. For processes that require personnel in the critical zone, robust aseptic behavior and technique training as well as an aseptic observer program are critical to ensuring continuous adherence to good aseptic behavior. For isolated systems where personnel are not present, a parametric release based on controls operating in their qualified state is possible.